Literally, if you have no idea what you're doing with your finances and you're a shopaholic, you have a lot of credit card debt, etc., Dave Ramsey is a good starting point, but I don't think that he really benefited me in my journey. So today I'm going to be talking about six different areas that I completely disagree with Dave Ramsey on. I was first introduced to Dave Ramsey from a local blogger and I remember reading her blog post where she was talking about how her and her husband got to do their um, debt-free scream on their show or something like that and I remember picking up the audiobook and listening to it on my ride to work and first of all I just want to say that his audiobook it makes me feel like he's yelling at me especially when you increase the reading speed so I listened to all my audiobooks at like 1.5 or 2 times speed so that just really enhances his like booming voice to make it sound like he's like your father scolding at you for doing something wrong but I think his audiobook is really laid out well for you to follow along and it's really motivational. But like I said, if you're further along in your financial journey than a beginner, I don't think Dave Ramsey is a good place for you to start. I think it would be good supplemental material, but you might find yourself in the same situation that I did where you weren't completely agreeing with everything he was saying. So now with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started with the first point, which is Dave Ramsey believes that debit cards are better than credit cards. The pushing reason for this is that Dave Ramsey believes that credit cards are riskier than debit cards, which I don't believe is true because your debit cards are not protected under the Fair Credit Billing Act, which means that if your account gets hacked, all of the money that was charged to your credit card is refunded to you. You will normally get a notification from your credit company saying we think that this is fraudulent charge like let us know if you actually purchase this but it, with a debit card if a hacker gets access to your debit account and drains that money I believe most banks are only responsible for up to $500 so if you had like $2,000 in there and it's completely drained most banks aren't going to be liable for the full amount and with that, you also have to notify them within a certain time frame. So say you got hacked in January, but you didn't notice until like mid-March and you notify your bank. If that is outside of their time frame, you are fully liable for all of that money. Like meaning your bank is not going to refund you for any of that. That's just like another risk that you can avoid by having a credit card. Point number two is that Dave Ramsey claims that 70% of all rewards points from credit cards go unused. I know that rewards points from American Express, Chase, and Bank of America do not expire. So those points can be used for cash back, gift cards, traveling, like you can literally use your points for almost everything. And I think on Amazon you even have an option of paying with points as well as with PayPal. Kyle and I actually went on a 10 day vacation where we stopped at Las Vegas, Honolulu, Hawaii, and Los Angeles and it cost us a total of like $1,500 and that's because we ended up using a lot of our points for the flights and for the hotel stays. The third thing I don't agree with Dave Ramsey on is having a joint account when you're married or with your significant other. I know a lot of people like say like don't get a joint account if you're not married because like they'll take all your money or whatever and Kyle and I have been together for seven, no, six years and we do not have a joint account. We don't even charge each other for things. We just kind of estimate on how much we've been paying for things and we're fortunate enough to be in a situation where if I feel like I'm spending too much money on groceries, I can just say, hey Kyle, do you think you can pick up the groceries the next time you go? Or vice versa. I actually give him a check for our mortgage and our utilities and that's that's been working fine for us. I know a lot of people aren't gonna feel comfortable with that, but we're also in a situation where we don't feel the need to get married. So the reason I don't agree with Dave Ramsey on this point is because in his audiobook, he actually says, do not have separate banking accounts unless you plan on getting divorced. And I think that's a really bold statement for someone to make. And it's just, I couldn't support someone who honestly believed that. Number four touches on his first baby step, which is saving $1,000 for an emergency fund. I completely agree with Dave Ramsey in the sense that you should have an emergency fund, but I don't think that $1,000 is enough because if you for some reason need to be in an ambulance or you need to take an ambulance somewhere, an ambulance ride is about $900. Your emergency fund is gone. Like, that's it. 
Point number five is he talks about when you're paying back your debt, you should use the snowball method. And I agree, the snowball method is very useful. It helps you with progress and helps you stay accountable to how much you're paying towards your bills. But I disagree with him when he says that you should pay your lowest debt first as opposed to your highest interest rate because mathematically you will be paying more money if you delay paying off your higher interest rate debts. Suze Orman is another financial like advisor person and she advocates for the avalanche method, which is basically talking about the interest rates versus the snowball method. Dave Ramsey does say that the reason he advocates for paying off your lowest amount first is because psychologically little wins are better for you and it encourages you to keep paying off your debts. But like I said earlier, if you are at a point in your financial journey where you do hold yourself accountable and you don't need those small wins to be motivated to continue paying off your debts, you really should look towards paying off your highest interest rates first instead of the lowest amount. The sixth and final reason I disagree with Dave Ramsey is probably the most controversial one, and that is that he advocates for you to stop contributing to your 401k even if your company matches it. That is insane. That doesn't even make sense because that's literally free money you are saying no to. He does go on to say that you should invest 15% of your income in baby step number four, but that is after you have already saved three to six months worth of expenses and paid off all of your debt excluding your mortgage. For me, that just doesn't make sense. Like my company matches 4% of my income. So if I choose not to put in 4% of my income, I am losing 4% from my company that they are just giving me for saving money. And that just, why would you not invest into your 401k if your company matches your amount? Like it just, it blows my mind. Even when you're at baby step number four and you are ready to invest 15%, you can't go back all the months or even the years that your company has offered to match that money. Like that is gone. Like you cannot get that money. Invest money if your company matches it. I am not a financial advisor. I am not recommending that everyone needs to do the things that I do. Maybe following Dave Ramsey is better for you. But for me, Dave Ramsey just struck a lot of things that I just highly disagree with and I wanted to share that with you to kind of see the opposite perspective. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It encourages me to make more content like this to help you guys and kind of share my experiences as I stumble into my 30s. If you're interested in reading Dave Ramsey's book, I will post a link in the description. And if you would rather listen to it on audiobook, I will go ahead and share my affiliate link for you to get two free audiobooks if you are a new member to Audible. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye!